In this video, we'll be discussing the difference between pending, stored, and permanent diagnostic codes. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So my name is Random Fix, and today we'll be discussing pending, stored, and permanent codes. Some information for you guys, and I'll even display it for you on the screen so you guys can follow me along. And that way you guys can get your issue quickly resolved. In this video, I'm going to discuss what some of these codes are and if they can prevent you from passing an emissions test. So the very first one we want to jump into is going to be the pending codes. And with pending codes, as long as all the other monitors are ready and you have not triggered a check engine light or a stored code, you can pass an emissions test with a pending code. And oftentimes these pending codes are triggered by intermittent or random issues that come up and this could be from bad fuel a misfire hitting a bump and one of the connections on a sensor becomes undone and the vehicle now needs more time to go ahead and trigger this into a stored code or it wants time to evaluate and figure out if this is just something that was random and it will clear the code on its own so the way you can clear a stored code is by continuing to drive it and letting the vehicle do it disconnecting the negative terminal and on some of the newer vehicles this does not work that well or you can go ahead and use an OBD2 reader and the OBD2 reader will go and clear the code for you. Anytime you clear a code from a vehicle just understand you're going to be clearing the inspection monitor data so this may involve having to go and drive your vehicle to set all the inspection monitors. This can be relatively easy on a new car or it could be very time consuming on an older car that has a lot of miles. And if the pending code comes up enough times, it'll go and turn into a stored code. So a stored code has many different names. It can be called an active, a actual, a valid, present code. And whatever name it goes by, they're basically made caused by the same exact issues. This is where the vehicle has detected that there's a problem. It's seen it more than a few times. And a lot of times these stored codes will trigger a check engine light and the check engine light will turn on and stay on. And the only way that the check engine light will turn off is if the vehicle goes and finds out that that issue has been resolved. You go and clear with the OBD2 reader. And lastly, if you have an older vehicle, sometimes you can undo the negative battery terminal and that can go and clear up that stored code. And with the stored code, you cannot pass an emissions test. So even if all the monitors are ready, you will not be able to go ahead and get your car to pass inspection. And the third kind of code is going to be this permanent code. And the permanent code is almost like a tattoo. This is a code that cannot be cleared by you. Even if you unplug the battery or you use a scan tool or an OBD2 reader, the vehicle basically has to detect that the issue has been resolved and then it will go and clear up this permanent code on its own. And this affects vehicles 2000 10 and newer and the reason they came up with the requirement for the permanent codes is because a lot of people were bypassing the smog emission standard by erasing their check engine light setting all the inspection monitors and going and getting the vehicle tested before the vehicle had enough time to verify that the issues were actually fixed so permanent codes cannot be deleted and if you have a permanent code, your check engine light may not be on. And the way you can go and clear up a permanent code is by starting the vehicle 15 times and doing complete warm up in a cool down. So normally a cool down is letting the vehicle sit for about eight hours. And you want to drive the vehicle five to 10 miles once you have it started. And this is known as the 15 200 rule. So warm up the vehicle 15 times and drive at least 200 miles. And you can pass an emissions test with the permanent code. And if you walk into a regular smog station and you haven't called before or you've never done business with them, a lot of times the smog technician will tell you to keep driving as they're afraid that the vehicle is basically rigged. So what you have to do is call around and let the smog technician know, I have set all my inspection monitors and I have a permanent code, but I have warmed it up 15 times and I've driven at least 200 miles. And the technician should go and now perform the inspection. And if you're really having a hard time with this in your area, you can file a complaint with whatever board governs the emissions test in your area. 
but in my experience it's better to just find a new station that will go ahead and do it for you and to avoid wasting time and driving unnecessarily just call them instead so to do a quick recap the very first stage of getting a DTC is going to be where it goes pending a pending code can turn into a stored code or a valid code and then that valid code will turn into a permanent code if the issue is severe enough and a lot of times these permanent codes are going to be for emission related components if there's something that I left off in this video please let me know what it was and I'll point you guys in the right direction and I'll leave you guys a few links in the video description box down below to the OBD2 reader that I use it's under $30 and it has a nice display which can go ahead and let you know everything just from one screen and it shows pending stored and permanent codes I recorded this video and all the information was up to date as of January 26 2024 so just know that this information can change and it's really important to know how to look up your state's requirements and I'll leave you guys a video link down below on how you can do that as well and if you want to avoid some of these problematic vehicles I'll leave you guys to the number one resource that I recommend before you buy any vehicle and all those will be found in the description box down below and I'll leave you guys links to the individual videos in case you guys want to dive in a little bit deeper and I have a bunch of videos on different subjects that can help you with your emissions issues so if you need a vehicle specific drive cycle I have you covered if you're having a particular issue with an inspection monitor such as a catalyst the EGR or the oxygen sensor not setting I have videos and you'll find those in the video links down below make sure you guys do not forget to hit that thumbs up button as I really do put a lot of time and effort into these videos and I really appreciate you guys watching today and make it a great day thank you again